It's a power outage situation here in London. No power, no fridge, no freezer, no electrics, no street lighting. Ideal. Hello and welcome to Next Day Solar. One of the concerns we have at present is power failure and grid outage. It's something that the National Grid has been talking about and if we have a very, very cold Christmas due to all the things that are going on in the global environment, there will be a shortage of natural gas and we get half our energy from natural gas. So we need to think of a way of managing short power outages around the homes, around our workplaces and around sensitive situations, whether you're caring for elderly or have young children. The effect of power outage is quite severe. Now I had a power outage in my home about a year ago now and my children were absolutely petrified. When you lose power, not only do you lose your lights and your essential things, your internet, your TV, the things that you take for granted every day, how to wash your clothes, etc., uh, how to boil the kettle, to have a cup of tea. Um, but most importantly, and especially during a winter season, you lose the heating. And that for me is the biggest reason why we at Next Day Solar have decided to look into this. Heating systems use between 50 to 70 watts of energy. Now, if you're new to energy, that is a very small amount of energy. And there's no reason why, in case of a grid failure, you can't keep your boiler going and manage the lighting in other ways. There are lots of different ways to manage lights. You might have temporary lighting, which is fine, but the boiler and the heating system it to me is incredibly important, especially for those that are vulnerable. Imagine having a very cold shower or a very cold bath at the end of a very, very cold day. And in Scotland last year, due to Storm Arwen, that went on for seven days and that got us really focused on, we need to develop a solution. Now we've covered off some of the concerns with power failure, let's look at how we can solve that in your home or property. The first thing that you'll need if you want to power your whole home is a grid changeover switch. Now we cover the installation of this, which we'll show you now. It takes roughly an hour, it will need an electrician to do it, and it effectively allows you to disconnect from the grid. You can only have a generator, whether that's a small generator or a large one, powering your home if you disconnect from the grid. Otherwise there's a risk of backfeed and if engineers happen to be working on the power system down line from your property and you are running your generator, you risk giving them or others around them electric shock. So the regulations here in the UK are currently that if you are going to use your own generator system during power outage, you need to disconnect from the grid. So the first thing that you will need is a grid changeover switch. It's very simple to install, it simply takes power from the grid into it, takes power from another device, which power station, uh, to it, and then it goes out to your consumable to power your home. Now, in a recent video you may have seen from us, we attempted to power the whole home and the heating system using this small generator. Now this generator is rated to 300 watts, and because the heating system is only 100 watts, it should have worked, but it didn't. And the reason it didn't is because of an inrush current. Inrush currents are very, very steep draws of energy, very, very quickly, rapidly, to charge all the capacitors in your home. Every little electric device has capacitors in it. Motors as well, when they start up, use four or five times the amount of energy as they do when they're running. So we found that this inverter tripped over very, very easily. And then sadly, whilst this would be great for running laptops, TVs, internet, and other basic loads around the property, and it's small and flexible and light, it was unlikely to power our system in this property. Properties will vary and heating systems may vary. If you were to connect directly to your boiler with a plug, it may work. But in this property where there are heating controls around the house, it didn't. So we wanted to find an additional solution. And today we'll talk to you about our new solution. Let me explain what we've got here. A very simple uh, battery system with an inverter. Now we've gone for a lithium battery, so we've got 5,000 life cycle charges, but of course you could go for lead, AGM or other batteries. We've gone for lightweight and size in this scenario. We've got our battery, we've then got a DC inverter. We've used the very best components here from Victron, who in my opinion are one of the world leaders in energy systems. Why? I think their customer service, their support, their information is superb. And the ease of use and the functionality of their equipment is excellent. So we've got a DC uh, lithium battery, a DC inverter, and then we've added in a couple of extra toys here. A smart shunt to show us, and we'll show you in a moment how that works, how long your property could last for off-grid running this system. We've got a battery protect device, and a battery protect device is great because when the battery gets really, really low, it will turn the system off, and that way you don't ruin your battery. So those are the key components of it, and it's nicely housed in a protective box to ensure it's safe and out of harm's way. It's lockable as well in case of little ones running around. So on the top, we've got an AC outlet so you can plug your devices into that. And that means that not only is this suitable for use in a property in a more fixed permanent location, but it's easy to pull out and use in other scenarios, whether that was on the go, on the road, or in a small business, or from property to property. So it's really easy to move around. So that's just a very quick overview. 
Now, I just want to touch on earthing and safety. So there's an RCD socket up here, so it's protected and it protects the property uh, downstream of it. We also have an earth. So the inverter is earth, carrying its earth through to here. And this power station is earth to the home's earth. Now, you shouldn't rely on the home's earth. And in an ideal scenario, under the latest electrical regulations, you should install your own earth rod if you can. But we're in an indoor setting here. It would be quite a challenge now to install an outdoor earth. So whilst we can't rely on it, we are going to use the earth because we know that whilst we're going to be using, when we're using this, um, it's likely to be because of grid failure, not because of a problem with the earth uh, somewhere on the power system. So it's just something to touch on when it comes to earthing. Okay, so what I'm currently doing is, in every property you'll have a consumer board. Um, some are larger, some are smaller. And there are certain circuits that I know will be too much for the battery inverter system that we're installing to power. In case of a grid failure, who's ever in the property knows Ones with the stickers, I can leave on. Ones without the stickers must remain off. So the sockets that I've left off are the hob, the kitchen sockets appliances, which is the kettles, the cooker, and effectively the car charger. And everything else will be left on when we come to simulate it later. Okay, I'm now gonna simulate grid failure following four steps. I'll outline the steps, then I'll simulate the failure. The first step is I'm gonna knock off the grid. I've got an isolator here, it's very easy to do. The second step I'm going to do is turn off all the circuits that may overload the inverter here. We do do inverters of various different sizes and if there are certain things in your property like a heater or a cooker that you wanted to run, we could of course specify that. But for this scenario, we've got an 800 watt inverter with a slightly greater peak, so I'm going to isolate the loads. The third step is I'm going to boot up my system. I've got a very, very simple DC isolator here. It just keeps the system off and safe and I'm not using it and conserves the battery. I'll turn that on. And the final step that I'll take is to initiate my changeover switch here. Currently, the generator's off, the main supply is on. I'll change that to mains off, generator on. And with a bit of luck, all the lights will come back on. Are we ready? Let's do it. So my first step, grid's off. I'm going to turn off all my sockets in my property. All my circuits are off in the property. I'm going to activate my inverter. Which is going to activate the power system. Inverter's on, those lights are on, which is great. Initiate my changeover switch. My property is now being powered. And then I'm going to turn on my heating system. I'll do that first. Good. Now, if you have a look up here on the shunt, this is the heating system booting up, 57 watts. If you look at the heating controls on the wall, they're already powered on. And if we come over to the boiler, the boiler is powered. So you can see that a very small amount of energy is being used. The heating system is booting up now, a little bit more of a draw, up to almost 170, 180 watts, 12 amps of PC, okay, as the, system kick, as the system kicks in. Now, what I can now do is improve things even further. I can turn the lights on. I can turn my sockets on. I can turn my other sockets on. I can turn my other lights on. I can turn my lights on the ground floor, such as the lights in this room here. And you can see, I'll work my way around. And here you can see the load here. We've got an 800 watt inverter. So I'm well within the capacity of the load. And slowly, slowly, I'll put on my entire property, which we're running off this system. Turn on my sockets on the first floor. I've got six hours of runtime. I'll just let everything stabilize because in the initial phases of a power on, everything is drawing a lot of energy. You can see we're running 600 watts here and the system is now, uh, system is now using the fan to cool itself down. We'll let that stabilize down. We'll see what else is left. We've left my hob off. I'll turn my smoke alarms on. I'll turn, and I've left my kitchen appliances on. So the only things that we've got off now are, if it, I'll turn my lights on on the first floor of the property, peaking at 630 watts. That will come down and stabilize once everything's back, back to where it needs to be. The only things I've got off now are my hob, my water heater, and my kitchen appliances, and my cooker. And that's all I've got off. Now, as you can see, we've now got everything in the property running. We're running for 300, and we're taking 300 watts of energy. I've got a run time on the, on the battery system of about two hours, and that will increase as the lows in the property come down. If we want to see how long the heating system could run for, let me do as follows. Turn my sockets off upstairs, turn my circuits off on the ground floor. I turn my CCTV off, I don't need that. I'll leave my central heating on. I'm turning the lights off on the first floor. I'm turning the lights off on the ground floor. Lights are gonna go off in here. 
Now, as you can see, the clock is going up, and that's because the system's stabilizing. My load is constant at 122 watts, and if we recall, that's running the power systems around the home, all to do with the heating. That means I've got hot water around the property. I've got my boiler working, as you can see here, very happily. Boiler's happily working in the background. So in case of a situation like that, and as you can see, it's climbing and climbing, we're now gonna be north of six hours with hot water and heating. That would see you through a night. And when the government talks about three hours of grid shortage, I've now got more than double that in my property. Hours back on and you happen to see the lights around the street. Very, very simply, you come to your changeover switch here and you put it back up to the mains. You then come down to your box, turn your DC isolator system off. My lights are gonna go off here. In this scenario, my inverter is then turned off and then I can put back up any of the circuits that I have on my property that I turned off due to grid failure, like so. It's as simple as that. Now you might be wondering, how is my battery gonna always remain topped up? And this is an important thing to note. Inside here, we have a battery charger. Now what I've done, and I have plugged it in up here and I'll just plug it back on now. So I plug it back on and then I'll come into my Victron system here and here I can see my battery charger. And because we've been using some energy, it's now starting to charge the battery. I've configured it to charge at 13 volts, 15 amps. So it's important to mention that when you do start to use your system, you in turn your charger off. Otherwise you'll be using the energy to charge the battery in this kind of cycle. So it's not a problem, it's not a safety issue, but I always keep my charger plugged in. And then in case of that grid failure, just pop your charger off. And the reason for that, uh, keeping that charger always on is it will keep the battery always nicely topped up. We've used some energy from the battery and we're now putting the energy back into the battery from the grid. Of course, it could be through solar, could be from other ways. I'm just gonna demonstrate how easy it is to remove the system. So I've just pulled it out. Got really nice carry handles here just to pick the device up. As you can see, it's on wheels, it easily moves around. The only thing that's connected is the charger. It's really simple. Just a three pin plug, just coils nicely in the back of the device. So if you are moving property, or if you're thinking, right, can I use this on a weekend somewhere and then bring it back to my property? Of course you can. Easy to move around. Able bodied person can easily lift it up. Not overly heavy. Two really nice carry handles and it can be moved around with ease. Easy generator solution. It's got nice lockable brakes on the front as well. Easy to access, easy to lock away at the end of the day once you've got it all set up. You don't need a great deal of space. Um, it is important to note that it should be near your consumer board. That's quite important. You could have a long cable running from this to your consumer board, but you ideally want to locate your changeover switch somewhere near your consumer board. That's um, just something to mention. But typically under the stairs, garage, somewhere like that, very easy to do. I hope you found that informative and interesting. It's a very, very brief overview of our backup solution for your home. Very easy, we send you the kit. A local electrician can install the changeover switch for you. We supply the changeover switch for you. A reminder that if you can, do try and install your own earth. We shouldn't really rely on the grid for earth, but it can be done in a nice, simple, lockable box, easy to move. It's on four wheels, it's got handles as well, so if you wanna take it out and move it around your property or moving from property to property, you can. But in this way, as you've seen today on today's video, we have energy independence. We're a prosumer in that we're producing our own energy if we need to. And it means that in case of grid failure, we are independent, we've got heating, we've got lights, we've got energy, and all the things to run our lives. Thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon, bye.